If you brought a Bible, if not, look at your neighbor that has one and smile and slide over and <coughs> maybe they'll share with you. Go to two openings, please. Proverbs chapter 3 and Romans chapter 8. Proverbs 3 and Romans 8. You're believing with me for utterance, right? Yes. Utterance is greatly affected by the hearer. Proverbs 3 and Romans 8. <clears throat> what the Lord's put on my heart, I, I, I'm not expecting to, to finish it tonight, but we will have some more opportunities. And, and, um, but it's, it's big, it's very big. And it is one of the most important things you could ever learn. I know that's a big statement, but I say it advisedly. One of the most important things you, your children, could ever learn. So believe with me and let the Lord minister to you on it. In, uh, in Proverbs, which one did I tell you first? Three. Proverbs 3, and then we're going to Romans 8. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord... With all your heart. Trust in the Lord with what? You don't trust God with your head. Romans 10 says, For with the heart man believes. Important to, to discern. You don't trust God with your mind. You think with your mind. Not trust. You trust with your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. So he differs between the two. In all your ways. How many of your ways? This is important too. Don't imagine you can handle part of it and just get him involved on the tough ones. Huh? In how many of your ways? In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Somebody say acknowledge him. acknowledge him. Acknowledge him means acknowledge that he's there. Acknowledge he knows more than you do. Ask him for the direction and help. Get him involved. Don't exclude him. Include him. And if you'll do it, what did he say he would do? What did he say he would do? In all your ways, every part, everything, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Come on, tell me what he said, what he said he would do for you. <laughs> he shall direct your paths. If God is directing your paths, are you going to wind up in the right place? Yes. Are you going to wind up in the good place yes. where good things happen? You wind up in Prosperity Town. Yes. You wind up in Healingville. Yes. Hmm? You wind up in Victory City yes. when the Lord is directing your steps and your path. Let me read it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. So when he tells you, do this, don't do this, you know already that leaning to your own understanding is, is an issue. And it's something you're going to do if you don't learn how to do the other and don't make an effort to do the other. Elsewise, he wouldn't have brought it up. The Lord doesn't bring up things, don't do this for no reason. <laughs> if the Lord says, don't do this, what can you figure? That's what everybody's doing and they need to quit. They need to change. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do what? Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Glory to God. Now look in Romans, please. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans chapter eight. Let me have a sip of that water there. Mike, please. Romans chapter 8. Thank you, sir. Verse 
Romans chapter 8, and we'll begin in verse 14. He distinguishes in Romans 8 between the spirit that's in us and the spirit that's in the world. And he talks about what the spirit does for us. In Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. There is a spirit of fear, and it will lead you if you let it. Is everybody awake? Yes. But you and I are not to be led by the spirit of fear. Amen. We're to be led by the spirit of God. Amen. Hmm? Yes. Sons of God can be, should be led by the spirit of God. Now, this is something that's not widely understood in the body of Christ. Uh, Brother Mac mentioned uh, all of our association with, with Brother Hagen, and, and I thank God on a regular basis for what the Lord ministered to us about this through him. You don't get a lot of light and understanding about being led by the Spirit just everywhere and through every ministry. Have you noticed this? Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, of ministries, whole denominations, whole groups that are just woefully ignorant yeah. That's right. of this whole subject of being spirit led. And, and you got people, bless their hearts, they're still putting out fleeces. They're still flipping coins. Yeah. You might know what I'm talking about. They just... Uh, uh, I'm not talking about years ago. I'm talking about right now. And they're asking everybody and their brother what they think. And, and they're going by a general consensus and uh, uh, majority opinion and every other thing. And that is not being led by the Spirit. And uh, the, the head of the church taught Brother Hagin personally about how to be led by the Spirit. About identifying the inward witness, uh, which is, is not a, an audible voice, and, and also stronger, more authoritative ways that the Spirit of God ministers. Uh, he has a great book uh, called How to Be Led by the Spirit. Right. used to be a, what, a white one with a blue dove on the front. If you, if you haven't read that, let me encourage you, get that, feed on it, go through the scriptures because it's, uh, if you believe what he said, then this is not just something he got in study. The head of the church personally revealed it to him. And so this is, uh, should be a top priority. Well, um, he said here, you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear puts you in bondage. The Bible said in Hebrews that through uh, all their lifetime, people are subject to bondage because of the fear of death. Well, what will the truth do for you? Well, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen. And being led by him will liberate you. Yes. Being led by fear will constrict you, right. will limit you. Again and again and again. It'll limit you and put you in bondage. And all of us have experienced some of this. And, and please, let's not presume where we sit tonight, we have arrived at being spirit led. How many would, would agree we can learn some things about this? We can come up another notch or 10. Come on, are y'all with me? in learning how to be led by the Spirit. Would it affect our life? Yes. How would it impact us? I became convinced as a 16-year-old boy a few days ago <laughs> that if I could learn how to hear from God, Keith had it made. I became convinced as a teenager, if I could learn how to hear from God, I had it made. Because I've already made up my mind, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. 
and I'm just convinced if I'll do what he tells me to do, everything's going to work out. Right? He's going to take care of everything. If I'm doing what he's telling me to do, everything has to work out. I got it made. And now, years later, I'm more convinced of it than ever. That is true. It's true. If you'll be led of him, he will lead you right out of confusion into glorious light. He will lead you out of sickness into health. He will lead you out of death into life. He will lead you out of debt into freedom, out of lack into prosperity. Come on, are you listening? He will lead you out of marriage hell into marriage bliss. He will. He will lead you out of fruitlessness into fruitfulness, into abundance. He will lead you into a good place, a broad place. But you got to follow. I said you got to follow. You got to identify his leadings and then follow. One of the first steps is just making a commitment in your heart. I'm going to be spirit led. Hmm? I'm making up my mind. I'm going to be spirit led. I'm going to be a spirit led Christian. A, a huge number of Christians are not. They're not spirit led. You can be head led. Hmm? I said head led. You can be, how many think that's a good idea to be head led? Millions of Christians are head led in most of what they do. You can be emotion led. You can be feeling led. And emotions are real. Oh yeah, feelings are real. And they can be powerful, but it doesn't make them God. I've heard people say, well, I just, I just feel so strong. Yeah, but you can just be so wrong <laughs> about it. A strong feeling doesn't mean it's right or that it's true. But if you're led by that feeling, you're not being led by the Spirit. If you're led by reasoning or statistics, what's rational, logical? That's being logic-led. It's not being Spirit-led. One of the greatest things, and I, I've been in the pursuit of this for a number of years now, as I begin to see it through Brother Hagin's ministry and the things that the Lord gave him, I saw this is a discipline. And it's one of the greatest disciplines you could ever learn. It's something that Jesus operated in day and night in perfection. Jesus was never Head-led, emotion-led, feeling-led, need-led, opportunity-led. Come on, are y'all listening? He was always and only spirit-led. Do you believe it? Yes. Somebody say always, always. and only, only. spirit-led. Spirit now, can you understand it takes discipline to be that way? Because there's a lot of things are going to try to lead you. There are many voices in this world. There are many influences. And some of them can be strong. And the devil is pushy. Have you noticed that? He's not nice at all. He's not a gentleman. He's a pusher. He's a coercer. He's a manipulator. And if you're not strong, you'll yield to, to things. He'll come in with fear and fear is strong and it's real and the feelings and the thoughts and fear is not rational. It's not reasonable. Have you ever, don't, don't raise your hand on this now, but <laughs> have you ever done something that made no sense when you look back at it later? You think, why did I do that? Something led you. Question is, why did you follow it? Why did you follow it? So I want us to talk about, as the Lord would help us, what's, what's leading us? What's leading us? What are we following? 
and to begin to do what the scripture said, in all our ways acknowledge him at every juncture where we're to make a decision, where we're to choose a path or a response or, or a, an act or react. At every juncture to learn how to look inside and acknowledge him and in the midst of all these uh, influences be only spirit led. Is anybody going to believe with me on this? Yes. Hmm? Is this a desire of yours? Yes. If we will be spirit led, we cut off opportunity to the enemy. Amen. See, the enemy, he, he, he's always trying to prepare traps for you. But he can't just impose them on you. He has to lead you into it. He can have it set up, but he can't just put you in it. He doesn't have that kind of power and control. What he has to do is to get you through fear or through some other kind of bad choice to get you to step into it, go through that door, go down that path. Then he can have happen to you what he set up for you. But if you absolutely won't be led by anything except the Spirit of God, He can't get you on the path. He can't get you to go through the wrong door. He can't get you to go that way. But it requires strength. I said it requires help from the greater one. It requires grace. It requires discipline. You have to get real, real tough about this, that I refuse to be led by anything or anybody except the Holy Spirit. Hmm? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons. Are you a son of God? Yes. Sons of God can be led by the Spirit of God. I mean, when, when Jesus was about to leave and the disciples were upset and he said, look, it's going to be more profitable, expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Father's not going to send the Spirit. But if I do, he will send him. What could be better than, than, than walking with Jesus in the flesh? Having the Spirit of Jesus inside you 24-7 is better. Much better. Much better. Hallelujah. But a sad fact is that he is in many, many Christians, but they are not allowing him to lead them. Even when he endeavors to lead, they overpower and push down and suppress and quench the witness. And they act stubbornly where he is concerned to do what they think is best or what's pushing and pressing the hardest at the moment. It takes discipline of heart, discipline of spirit to be always and only led by the spirit. Hmm? Now y'all told me you're going to help me with this, right? Don't. Okay. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Keep reading. He didn't give us a spirit of bondage again to fear. We're not led by that spirit. But we've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself, other translations say himself, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So here he tells us the very means and way he communicates with us. Not with our head, not with our flesh, not with our reasoning, not with our intellect. The Spirit of God is spirit. We are spirit. Spirit communicates with spirit. Now that enlightens your mind, but it's spirit to spirit with effects on the mind and the body. Say it out loud. He bears witness, he bears witness. With, my with my spirit. And he leads me, he leads me. night and day. Hallelujah. 
His leading is supposed to become so real to us that everything that happens, we're constantly checking on the inside, checking on the inside, checking on the inside. Which way do I go? How do, how do I respond? And it, it, it's major change if for the last 40 years you've made your decisions based on your head. You've got some major changing to do. Because you're trained in that, you're used to that. Or if for the last 40 years you've made your decisions based on your feelings. Hmm? Your emotions, your feelings. Either way, you've trained yourself and allowed yourself to be trained for decades to do that. It, the easiest thing to do is to keep making decisions based on feelings or facts. And it'll be a major change to, to push that aside. And to, uh, that's one reason we're singing, I shall not be moved. Hmm? Yeah. Not going to let anything move me. I'm going to be led internally. Yeah. Not externally. You know, we talked about putting out fleeces a moment ago. I said, what's wrong with that? Gideon put out a fleece. Well, Gideon wasn't born again. You couldn't tell him, be led, brother. He didn't have the spirit inside him to lead him. And so he didn't know. He, he's getting these spiritual influences in his life, and he's trying to figure out who is this, what is this. And yet you still got Christians putting out fleeces. And it's dangerous. You know, people say, God, if this is you, let four red cars come by my house at the same time. <coughs> I said, what's wrong with that? Well, the enemy is out here. He can do some things too. And if you're led externally, then you're easily misled. I said, if you're led externally, you're easily fooled, easily misled. And people pray, about, pray like this, Lord, if you want me to do this, then open the door. <laughs> if you don't want me to do it, Whoa. close the door. Really? Really? What does that mean? That means you're looking for something out here to happen. And when something happens or doesn't happen out here, then you're going to discern the will of God by things happening outside of you. Out here where the Satan is the God of this world. No, no. We need to be led enough by the Spirit that if he says go through there, if we show up and the door is shut, locked, and barred, we just stand there and believe God till it comes open. Come on, are y'all listening to me? We need to know his leading well enough internally to not be moved by what somebody tells us we can or can't do. What's available or unavailable. And at the same time, we're not, we shouldn't be led by opportunities. Here's a great opportunity. Here's the doors open. Even if the doors open and there's nice music inside, and people are waving and saying, come on in. That doesn't mean we run in. We stop and go, Lord, should I go through in there or not? Right? And be led internally, not externally. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. Where is the Spirit of God? How does He lead you? Not out here. The Spirit of God bears witness with your spirit. Led internally, not Externally. Hmm? Is that okay? If you're led by opportunities, that's not being led by the Spirit. Hmm? If you're led by invitations, led by what you can do, that's not being led by the Spirit. If you're led by what they say you can't do, that's not being led by the Spirit. Is it? Too many times people see things, hear things and go, well, that's that. Can't do that. Who said you can't do it? 
Well, you should do this. You should. Who said you should? It takes discipline. Oh, but it's the safe way of life. And it's the victorious way of life. And it's the way to get miracles. It's the way to slam the door on the enemy. To be always and only spirit led. Is this okay, saints? Always and only spirit led. Go with me to John, the third chapter, please. John chapter three. When I first started in ministry, 30 something years ago, <coughs> uh, being green and not knowing, I thought, well, a minister is a servant. You know, there's some of the same words are translated. And so I'm a, I'm a servant to the people. And so basically, I, I thought, you know, if, if somebody wanted something or needed something, I'm supposed to endeavor to do it. <clears throat> what are y'all laughing about? <laughs> and so uh, people would call and want, want to talk and want to counsel and want to... Uh, want me to come and want me to visit, want me to do this and do that. And man, in a very short amount of time, as you might imagine, I am busy, busy, busy. And uh, I was speaking a lot at the same time. So I, one day, this guy came and wanted to talk. And so uh, I said, sure, come on in. Now let's just stop right here. What am I being led by at this point? Hmm? He, he contacted me, said he wants to talk. Hmm? So I said, okay, let's talk. So who's leading me at this point? Hmm? I, that's not being spirit led. That's being led by him. Well, we need to ask the question, who's he following? Who's leading him? Because now, if I'm following him, I'm following whoever he's following. Who's leading me? Well, we met, and I didn't know this guy. And he wanted to explain to me his convictions and beliefs and his experiences and dreams and visions for two hours. And I want to be nice and I want to be kind and, and I want to try to help. And, he, and, and finally, you know, I got a service to go to. And as I'm leaving and going to the service, I realize I'm drained. I'm not in decent shape to minister to the people that I'm about to go minister to because I have been, where has my mind been for the last two hours? Hmm? Well, if, if I wasn't supposed to meet with this guy, then my mind has been places for the last two hours it wasn't supposed to be. And I'm doing something I'm not graced to do. And if you're not, one, one of the most fatiguing things you'll ever do is something you're not supposed to do. You talk about something that will wear you out because you are totally in your own strength. You got no help from him because you got no business doing it. <laughs> yeah, but they needed. Yeah, but they wanted. Yeah, but that's not being spirit led. That's being led by their need. Their want. That's being need led. Request led. Hmm? Yeah, but they called and wanted me to come. So that means you're supposed to jump and run. Because they called. Yeah, but it's my relative. Yeah, but it's my kid. So you're kid led. <laughs> Not spirit led. You're situation led. You're calamity led. Stress led. Fear led. 
Hmm? Y'all with me or not? Can you begin to see a whole lot of Christians are simply not spirit led? They're not. They come in church and take notes and shout about it and they got the book and tape series, but, but what they're doing day to day and why they're doing it is not being led by the Spirit. It's being led by all these other things. They're just responding and going and making decisions. As I was walking down the hall to that service I was about to speak at, I realized I have just let the enemy rob hours of my day through this man, whether he, whether he knew it or not, that's what just happened. And now I'm drained. I could have been in there getting quiet. I could have been in there waiting on the Lord. I could have been studying more about what I'm supposed to say and do. And I've been robbed of this time. I can't get back. And I really, it dawned on me, you're missing it by just doing anything and everything that people are asking you to do and you got to stop this. Now when you change it, not everybody understands. Because <laughs> they're not spirit led. Hmm? And don't, a lot of them don't even understand the concept. If they loved you and cared about being spirit-led, they wouldn't want you to do anything contrary to what the Spirit of the Lord led you to do. If they don't care and just want you to do what they want you to do, no matter what, then that shows their extreme carnality and their lack of care for you. And you must not let them lead you. I said you must not let them lead you when you know how to be Spirit led. Spirit led. Spirit led. I know when I first got in a, well, let's read this and then, I, and then I'll share this. In John 3, John 3 verse 1 is the story of Nicodemus who is apparently a, a good man came to, to visit Jesus now Nicodemus was part of the rulers of the Jews and they almost to a man despised Jesus and his ministry. Were seeking means to do away with him. But Nicodemus was different. He was obviously a man who was spiritual enough and knew God enough to know no. Nah, there's something good about this, something right about this. So he wants to go personally and talk to Jesus. And of course, the big thing that's been going on in the, in the council is, is this of God or is it not of God? What Jesus is preaching and teaching, the healings, deliverances, and miracles, that's the big, big, big deal. Is this of God? And they're saying, it can't be of God. He's breaking the Sabbath day. He's doing this. He's doing the other. And, and, and of course, Nicodemus is thinking, hold on. How do you get blind eyes healed? <laughs> and deaf ears open and, and the dead raised without God being involved. <laughs> now, he didn't, he didn't necessarily communicate all that to them, but he did. it's so strong in him, he wants to talk to Jesus personally. So he goes by night when not everybody would necessarily see him. And he comes to Jesus and Jesus speaks to him. And he says, verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night, John 3, 2. And he said, Rabbi, a respectful term, we know that you're a teacher come from God. Boy, I, probably most of the other guys wouldn't have said that. He said, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Now, what's Nicodemus wanting to talk about? He's wanting to talk about, he's wanting to ask Jesus about the works that's happening in his ministry and how that they've got to be of God. I think he's looking for something to take back to the council. He's looking for a way to, because he knows these guys are getting murderous. They want to kill Jesus. 
And he's become convinced this is of God and he's looking for a way to prove this and establish this. He wants to talk about the works that Jesus is doing. What did Jesus say to him? Read the next verse. What did Jesus say to him? Verse 3. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked him this. Jesus answered him with this. Can you see this? Because he is not led by the questions people ask him. Nicodemus didn't even know he should be thinking about the new birth. He didn't know there is such a thing as a new birth. So how's he going to ask the right question? That's right. He's not going to ask the right question in a thousand years. That's right. So does Jesus need to take up time talking to him about the ministry and the works that are being done and how we know it's God? He didn't even get into it with him. <laughs> Did he? No. He didn't even answer his question. He didn't even talk to him on the subject area that he wanted to talk about. He just looks at him and smiles and goes, you got to be born again. <laughs> and just like that, the conversation is shifted. And now it's where it needs to be. I said, now the conversation is where it needs to be. We're on the topic we need to be on. We're, this is the real issue. Hmm? Because whether Nicodemus knew it or not, those other guys in the council are never going to accept Jesus and his ministry. I don't care how much proof you give them or how many scriptures, there's no need even getting into that or dealing with that. But Nicodemus has some good things about his heart. Huh? And he can come all the way in this thing. Because in a few days, a new birth's going to be available. Hallelujah. And he can be a part of this born again, Holy Ghost filled church that's going to begin to be recorded about in the book of Acts. Come on, are you listening? And that's what he needed to know about. But now that is a radical way of ministry <laughs> compared to how most people minister. Hmm? Sadly, a great, great many ministers minister very much like the world does in psychology, psychotherapy. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying most ministers minister the same way. By what? Well, tell me what the problem is. Yeah, that's true. Huh? And so then based on what you tell me, try to answer you with scriptures if I can remember that apply to that subject. <laughs> Which is exactly how natural people minister. That's not spirit-led ministry. <laughs> if that's all you do. It's head led. You're formulating a response based on what they told you or asked you. Hmm? Then you're searching to see what you remember of what applies to what they asked. Head, head. Head, head. Head, 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 head. Or, or, it can be just as the same thing with emotion. They're crying. They're sobbing. They're hurting. So what do you want to do? Cry and hug. Huh? They're emotional. You're emotional. Right? Which is still not, still not spirit-led. I know, when, again, when I first began in ministry, 
I didn't know any of the things we're talking about tonight. <laughs> I was beginning to barely start to learn. And I grew up in a, a fairly sheltered environment. We grew up out in the country uh, on hundreds of acres of, of country land, undeveloped land, and uh, really an idyllic life. We weren't rich, but we were blessed. My dad, we, we started off living in the city as, as young, young boys. And my dad said he did not want us to grow up that way. So he, he took us back to the home place and he commuted and, and wanted us to grow up in the country. And looking back now, I thank him for it. Uh, it, it, it affected us in a lot of positive ways. My great, great, great granddad cleared the virgin timber off of this property and built. Actually, I lived for a while in the house my great-grandfather built with his own hands. And when I was a boy, I thought I was Tarzan. <laughs> I thought I was, man. I had the yell down perfect. And we had vines and trees, and we swung from them, buddy. And we, we swam with the snakes and the alligators and should have been scared. <clears throat> but my dad and mom loved each other and stayed together and loved us. And I, we're out there in the country, and I'm not saying everything was perfect, but we just didn't have some of the terrible stuff around us that you see in some places. And so now that I'm in ministry now, beginning days of my ministry, helping and working with Brother Hagen, people would come in. And, they'd, and, and, I, and I was to get with them to minister to them. And they'd begin to share what had happened in their life. And, and a lot of times by the time they got through, they're looking at me with tears streaming down their face going, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I didn't say it, but I'm thinking, I don't know what you're going to do either. <laughs> That's the most messed up thing I've heard in my life. I, I didn't know people could get that messed up. I mean, <laughs> we didn't do that back where I grew up. Um, <laughs> and so they're crying and, and bawling and, 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 and reaching and I'm handing them a Kleenex. And so then I have to get one for me too because I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is awful. This is awful. <laughs> Until I begin to realize this is not helping them. This is not going to help them. I'm getting sucked in to their emotions and their fears and their desperation and their unbelief. Come on, can you see this? I care about them, that's good. <clears throat> but then as they express their hopelessness and their fear and their desperation, they're overwhelmed by it. And a lot of times, most of the time, if it's real strong, it's not just them Humanly, there are spirits involved that they're yielding to. And if you're there with it, the influence will come on you too. And if you will, you can become just as hopeless feeling as them. Just as desperate as them. And that's not going to help anybody. Somebody here needs to have some faith. Is that right? Somebody needs to believe that all things are possible. Somebody needs to believe that God can fix this no matter how bad it is. Right? And it stand to reason, if you're the minister, it ought to be you. What do you think? It ought to be you that brought some faith to the party. But if you haven't found this out, you will. It's challenging to not get sucked in. You have to be disciplined in your spirit and in your soul and in your mind. And you have to learn how to minister like Jesus. Maybe they want to talk to you about how badly they've been treated. Maybe they want to talk to you about all these other things. But if you check your heart, the Spirit of God will have you completely ignore what they're wanting to talk about and bring, about, bring this up talk about this because there's no answers in this. 
There's no help in this. They've been crying over this for 20 years and they're worse now than when they started. There's no future in this. But people will get mad at you if you don't get upset over their problems. You don't understand. This is serious. This is serious. Yeah, serious unbelief. Serious fear and doubt. But with the Lord. Come on, help me out with the Lord. I don't care how awful it was. He can heal you and them and fix it and you and life can be better than it ever was. Or you can live in that and feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your life. You're not the only one that's ever had any challenges. And your situation is not worse than everybody else's. The Bible says the same afflictions are being accomplished in your brethren throughout the world. It's common to man. Hmm? I know folks don't like that because there's a certain amount of pride in my situation being special. <laughs> but that's how you stay bound and shattered by clinging to that stuff. Could be spirit led. I said you could be spirit led. Hmm? The spirit won't lead you to wallow in the problem. I said the spirit of God won't lead you. He won't lead you to wallow in the problem because he knows there's no answers there. It's only going to get worse. He'll lead you to do something that other people didn't even think about. He will lead you to get up and laugh at destruction and famine. Huh? He'll, get, he'll lead you to jump up and shout hallelujah with tears streaming down your, your cheeks. And to holler out, none of these things move me. I'm free. And the thoughts come, you're a mess. You say, shut up. I'm free. I'm free, I'm strong, I'm blessed. You got to go a different way than the world's going. And spiritual people will help lead you a different way. And if the Spirit of God's leading them and you're following them, then you're following the one that's leading them. Who's leading who? And who's leading you? Who's leading me? Who's leading us? What am I following? Who am I following? Should we be on the watch examining these things? Hmm? Can you take some more? Hmm? How about a little more? You're there in John. Go over to John 11. I'm telling you, friend, it's one of the most wonderful things you could ever learn in your life. How to be spirit led. It is. It's not something you just figure out with your head, though. It's something you learn to discern in your spirit. It's not, a, it's not a head thing at all. Well, obviously, it's being spirit-led, right? Not head-led. But what, what I've learned through the years, and if you do it long enough, then you start responding without thinking. And as a leader, particularly, leaders of churches and ministries, they have to learn this, or elsewise the enemy will mess up their, their church and their ministry. Mislead them. After a while, you begin to learn if something, if somebody comes and tries to put me in fear about something, yeah. I go into oppose mode. Yeah. Yeah. Everything about me just goes yeah. into resist it. If you're trying to get me to cry and feel pitiful with you, ain't gonna happen. 
I can't afford it. The people that depend on me can't afford it. Come on, are you listening? I'm not saying I can't be touched by the feelings of your infirmity, but you're not going to get me into fear with you. Because there's no future in fear. And if I make decisions based on fear, I'm no longer being led by the Spirit. I'm being led by the God of this world who's trying to put fear in people. And the thing is, the enemy knows that so many times. And if he can't get to you directly, he will try to come through the people closest to you that you love because he's counting on you loving that flesh so much that you will yield to him through them. And if they're looking at you, crying and begging and saying, I thought you loved me. (laughs) Now we're going to find out what you led by. Are you led by tears? Are you led by fears? Hmm? It requires some strength. To not be, not be moved by it. It requires a lot of strength. You got to have your anchor in God. Hallelujah. You got to make up your mind. If he ain't going, I ain't going. I love you. But if he ain't going, I ain't going. I got to hear from him. Amen. And, and, and the only, th- only response you're going to get out of me is faith. faith. I've learned I can't afford anything else. Amen. I can't give the enemy any place to mess with me. Yes. Hmm? And so when I begin to make the change, I'm not talking about being hard with people. People are crying their eyes out. And I used to hand them a tissue and then get one for me. And they said, I don't know what I'm going to do, Brother Keith. And I didn't say it, but I'm thinking, I don't know either. (laughs) You're messed up. (laughs) Because I didn't know people could be that messed up. I grew up a pretty nice life. And, uh, but I've I've learned. Even though I'm hearing some things they're saying, you've got to learn at some point, that's fear. That's That's unbelief. I'm not letting that in me. I'm not participating in this. I am not joining in this. Come on, are you listening? And, and, and once we know what the problem is, do not let somebody rehash it with you for the next two hours. Come on, are you listening? Go, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I understand. Now what do we need to talk about? We need to talk about the answer. We need to talk about hearing from God. We need to talk about what the Lord has said about it. Come on, are you listening? Quit talking about the problem. Hmm? When somebody's heart's broken, sure you care. But how long do you want your heart to be broken? Do you want to get healed? Or do you want to stay that way for the next 20 years? Come on, are you listening? You got to make up your mind. If you want to nurse this stuff, if you want to harbor grudges and ill feelings against those people, then you're going to have it and you're not going to get healed and you're not going to get over it. And it's not because God's putting, it, putting you through it. It's because you refuse to be spirit led. Because the spirit would direct you, forgive them and forget it. And quit talking about it. Don't bring it up again. You know, uh, we were at uh, some friend's house years ago and a little girl, cute little thing, uh, ran up to me and said, look, she called me Uncle Keith. Look, Uncle Keith, look, Uncle Keith. And she had uh, scraped her knee. I guess she fell off her bike or something. I mean, really gapped it. And, and mom had fixed this nice bandage and everything. And she said, look, look, Uncle Keith. And she grabs it and tears it off. And shows me how bad it was. And when she reached and started tearing, I'm thinking, no, 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 don't do that. And she just tears off the scab and all the healing that's taking place. But it's too, too late. It's done now. And I'm thinking, that was healing up so nice. And look what you did. 
but she's just a little kid. And so I said, yeah, and I, I patted it and hugged her and told her to be okay. But as I was doing that, the Lord said, that's exactly what my people are doing with heart hurts. They beg me to heal it. I start to heal it. And then they come and want to tell somebody how bad it was. And they pull off the bandage and they pull off what healing had taken place. Come on, are you listening? And start right over from scratch. How many of you want something healed? You got to cover it, take care of it, and leave it alone. Leave it covered, let it heal. And you ask people. Sometimes people talk about they're so upset and they're so distraught and you're thinking, okay, you know, uh, sorry to hear that. Let's, let's believe God. When did this happen? 30 years ago. 30? Uh, you know, I almost can't control my expression. I'm thinking, what? Yeah, but you don't understand. No, you don't understand. If you got a wound that hasn't healed up in 30 years, something's wrong with you. You're not healing right. Because you're not letting it heal. It doesn't matter what it is. Someone says, yeah, but you don't understand unless it happened to you. Do you believe God can heal anything? Come on. You either believe it or you don't. We're not talking about what I know and what I can do. God can heal anything. I don't care how you were hurt and mistreated. He can heal it. Anybody believe God can heal anything? Anything. But you've got to forgive and you've got to forget. You've got to quit talking about it. You'll be tempted. Oh, you'll be tempted. The enemy will bring thoughts and feelings and try to replay it in your mind and that's when, the, that, that's, a, that's a fight of faith. That's when you got to grab those imaginations and you got to cast them down and you got to say, I don't care how I feel, by faith I have forgiven them. And I refuse to talk about it. I refuse to get into this again. And if you'll do that long enough, it'll get to where it, does, it bothers you less and less and you think about it less and less. You know what's happening? You're healing. Come on, are you listening? You're healing. You're healing. And eventually, if you'll quit talking about it and quit thinking about it, quit messing with it, you'll get to the place where you are so healed, you can think about it and it doesn't even hurt you. Come on, do you believe all things are possible with God and with him that believes? But you've got to make up your mind, I'm not going to be feeling led. I'm not going to be experience led. I'm not going to be hurt led. I'm not going to be past led. I'm going to be Spirit led. And if the Spirit of God tells me quit talking about it, then that's it. We don't talk about it anymore. I don't care who wants to talk about it. And you will with some of your friends and relatives. You'll have to say, sorry, I'm not talking about that anymore. Oh, but you need to. It's, it's cathartic. You need to, you know, you need to get it all, get it all out. No, honey, you don't need to let it in. You know, you know what people call getting it out? Is a lot of times yielding to a wrong spirit. Heaving and crying till you can't hardly breathe. Come on, are y'all listening to me? That's got nothing to do with God and healing. That's yielding. To a wrong spirit. Spirit of grief. Sorrow of the world works death, the Bible said. True or not? And she said, well, you just don't understand. You'll be hurt next time we see you. You're not going to get past it like that. Because you think you're smarter than God. You think you know more about it than he does. It takes discipline yes. to be led by the Spirit no matter what. And to hear what people are saying and yet that's not, that's not what's going to lead you. You're checking here in all your ways. Hmm? All your ways means what? Every situation, every 
every situation. You're checking in here, checking in here. That's how Jesus operated night and day, perfectly. And it's so wonderful when you learn how to do it and people are desperate and upset and fearful and, and you hear it, but you're not hearing it. And you're looking for something else. And when he gives you that answer and he gives you that word and you think, glory to God, that's it. That's the answer to this thing. That's it. And then if they'll hear it and they'll receive that, then they can get free and cast all that stuff off and go, glory to God, this is it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And as sure as, surely as you do, what Jesus' mother said to him, whatever he says to you, do it. And that's how you get miracles. That's how the water turned into wine. And that's how you can put off the, the garment of heaviness. Hallelujah. And put on the garment of joy. Can you say glory to God? You can get rid of all that stuff. Stand on your feet, everybody. I think we ought to act on this. Can you come back tomorrow? You know we're not done. Stand on your feet, please. Singers and players, would y'all come, somebody? Oh, hallelujah. Just close your eyes. And reach up your heart toward the Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just play something. Yeah, brother. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hands. I want everybody to say it. If you, if you mean it, if you believe it in your heart, Father God, forgive me for yielding to things that are not you. Thoughts, feelings, fears, yielding to people instead of you. Yielding to situations instead of you. Thank you for giving me the perfect way to be led every day your wonderful Holy Spirit living in me 24-7. I purpose to be led by Him, to be led by you through your Spirit living inside me. Teach me about this. Remind me of what you've already shown me. What I've not yet understood Unveil to me. Open up to me. And show me how to. Walk in the Spirit. The Spirit-led life. In a greater way. Than I ever have before. To your glory. In Jesus name. Oh hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.